Hi, I'm Karen Berry. I'm with the Ministry of Children and Family Strategic Priorities Branch, working on residential redesign, and I was a foster parent for 20 years. I'm here today to talk to you about reporting critical incidents and emergencies that takes place separately from the daily log or monthly reporting. Do continue to record any critical incidents and reports to the ministry or agency in your log. You must notify the ministry immediately of any emergency that seriously affects a child or youth in care. Such emergencies include medical crises, accidents, runaways, arrests for juvenile crimes, and death. Emergency situations require an immediate response. Do whatever is possible to ensure the child or youth is safe or seek medical attention if necessary first, and then report the circumstance to the child's worker. All information of significance to the safety and well-being of a child or youth in care is promptly reported to the child social worker. It is the foster parent's obligation, as noted in each foster care home contract, to notify the child social worker as soon as possible after the occurrence of a reportable circumstance so the child social worker can plan for the ongoing safety and well-being of the child or youth in care. If the social worker is unavailable, the report is made to another social worker or the supervisor in the same office. After office hours, the report is made through after hours. This service is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Expectations for reporting are clearly documented in the standards for foster homes and in the family care home agreement, Schedule D. It is essential that information regarding all children in care be recorded accurately and objectively. It is the foster parent's responsibility to notify their resource social worker of incidents affecting the caregiver so that the resource worker can support the caregiver in planning for the short and long-term viability of the placement for the child or youth. Remember that your resource worker's role is to support you. In order to provide you with the best support and guidance, they must know what is happening in your home. Keep them informed for any critical incidents and reports to the child social worker. Some ministry and agency teams have developed forms for you to use for reporting. Ask your resource worker if they will supply any specific documents being used for reporting. Following are examples of reportable circumstances. The death of a child or youth, accident or illness of a child or youth that requires medical treatment or hospitalization, gestures, threats or attempts of suicide by a child or youth, any displays of self-injurious or high-risk behavior by a child or youth, situations when a child or youth is missing, lost, or run away, situations when a child or youth has observed, been involved in, or exposed to a high-risk situation or disaster, such as a fire or multiple abuse situation in a school that may result in emotional trauma or post-traumatic stress, intervention by law enforcement authorities with a child or youth, Situations involving the use of physical restraint or any other prohibitive behavior management practices. The unauthorized removal or attempted removal of a child or youth from the home, facility, school or day program. Marked behavioral changes exhibited by a child or youth. Suspension of a child or youth from their day, school or day program. Plans not previously authorized for the child or youth to be cared for by another person overnight. Any other circumstances affecting the safety or well-being of a child or youth in care. Reportable circumstances potentially affecting the child or youth's placement with the caregiver. Limitation in the ability of the caregiver to meet the safety and well-being needs of a child or youth. Limitations of the caregiver to meet other written caregiver service expectations. Criminal charge or conviction of a caregiver or other member of the household. Court supervised parole or probation of a caregiver or other member of the household. A physical, emotional or mental condition or substance abuse problem of a caregiver or other member of the household that could possibly impair the foster parent's ability to, to care for the child serious illness or injury of the caregiver or a member of the household, changes in the household occupants, significant change in the caregiver's financial circumstances that have potential to affect the care of the child or youth, significant increase in the use of alternative care arrangements. 
Possibly the most reportable item is when the child or youth is absent without notifying you first. If the child or youth in your care has a habit of running off without permission, commonly called AWOL, which stands for absent without leave, develop a plan with the child's worker and your resource worker about when to report an AWOL and what steps to take to locate the child or youth. In all cases, after a report is made, the ministry or agency director or social worker determines the type of response required based on the nature of the reported circumstances. Foster parents are reminded that After Hours also houses a foster parent support line that operates when the regular offices are closed. That office is staffed weekdays from 4 p.m. till 12.45 a.m. and weekends and holidays from 8 a.m. to 12.45 a.m. and it's staffed specifically to provide support, information, and documentation for foster parents. So if you're not sure whether a call is suitable for the foster parent support line, they suggest that you call them. And the number is one 495 They are able to document information. They're a confidential support line, so if you just need to debrief or need some support, they're there to help. I hope you enjoyed this segment of BC Foster Basics. If you need further information or assistance regarding foster parent education or any other fostering subject, please call us at 1-800-663-9999 or check out our website at www.bcfosterparents.ca. Also, please don't forget to visit the BCFFPA YouTube channel regularly for more topics in the BC Foster Basics series, topics such as adopting your foster child, understanding your contract, and many more.